Agency, The Hydroclops Battle, the third book of the Agency novel saga, by Jacob Reed. Chapter 1. The night was still, the air heavy with anticipation. Jake, Una, Olympia, Oscar, Olive and Orchid had been training for this moment for months. They had faced countless adversaries in the headquarters, honing their skills to perfection. But nothing could have prepared them for what lay ahead, the legendary Hydroclops, a hundred-year-old creature so fearsome that its name was after a cross between a bunch amount of other species such as Godzilla, representing the size, one eye, representing an alien, an octopus, representing the tentacles, and a pig, representing its snout. They had infiltrated its lair, deep within the heart of a dormant volcano, ready to face their greatest challenge yet. Oscar became the leader of the group, surveyed the cavernous chamber before them. It was illuminated by the flickering light of lava flows, casting ominous shadows on the jagged rocks that lined the walls. The hydroclops lay before them, a massive, scaly mass of tentacles and teeth. Its eye glowed with an unearthly intelligence, and its nostrils flared as it sensed their presence. Oscar glanced at his teammates, seeing the determination etched on their faces. All right, everyone, he said, his voice steady despite the pounding of his heart. We've trained for this. Let's do this. Una nodded, steeling herself for the battle ahead. As the team's strategist, she had spent countless hours planning how to defeat the Hydroclops. Her plan was simple, divide and conquer. Jake and Olympia would flank the beast, while Oscar and Olive distracted it from the front. They would have to move quickly and strike with precision. There would be no room for error. Orchid, who had been observing from a safe distance, couldn't help but feel a surge of pride for her team. Despite their differences, they worked together seamlessly. Their chemistry was unmistakable. She knew they would succeed where others had failed. As she watched them approach the Hydroclops, she began to formulate a backup plan, just in case. Jake and Olympia moved with the agility of predators, circling around the Hydroclops. The beast seemed to sense their presence, but couldn't quite pinpoint them in the darkness. Meanwhile, Oscar and Olive charged forward, firing a volley of laser blasts at its eye. The Hydroclops recoiled, momentarily stunned by the attack. The Hydroclops roared, its powerful voice echoing off the cavern walls. It whipped its tentacles wildly in their direction, sending boulders and chunks of rock flying through the air. Jake and Olympia dodged the debris with ease, closing in on the beast from behind. They had to act quickly, the longer they kept the Hydroclops distracted, the better it would be for their plan. Oscar and Olive were also moving swiftly, taking advantage of the monster's confused state. They fired another volley of laser blasts at its eye, scoring direct hits that caused the Hydroclops to stagger and howl in pain. As it tried to regain its balance, Olympia leaped onto one of its tentacles, using her agility to maneuver around its massive body. Jake, meanwhile, launched himself at another tentacle, sinking his teeth into the scaly flesh. Orchid watched from a safe distance, her heart pounding with excitement. She was proud of her team, but she couldn't help but feel a sense of foreboding. The Hydroclops was powerful, and it wasn't going down without a fight. She signaled to the backup team, preparing them for whatever might happen next. The Hydroclops thrashed violently, trying to shake off its attackers. It lashed out with another tentacle, catching Olympia off guard and sending her flying across the chamber. Jake let go of the tentacle and sprang to his feet, ready to help her. Olive and Oscar continued their assault from the front, firing a steady stream of laser blasts at the monster's eye. As the battle raged on, the lava flow beneath them began to heat up, casting a bright orange glow over the chamber. The air grew thick with smoke, making it difficult for them to see. The Hydroclops took advantage of the confusion, launching a powerful tentacle attack at Olympia. Jake leaped in front of her, using his body to shield her from the impact. The force of the blow sent them both flying across the room, skidding to a halt several feet away. Una couldn't believe what she was seeing. Her team was in serious danger. She signaled to the backup team, who had been waiting anxiously for their cue. They nodded, readying themselves to enter the fray. Una took a deep breath and called out to her teammates. Jake, Olympia. This isn't how the plan was supposed to go. 
Stay back to back and use your skills to distract the Hydroclops while the backup team sneaks in some damage from behind. Oscar and Olive were already regrouping, readying themselves for another assault. They exchanged a glance, knowing that they had to keep the Hydroclops occupied while their teammates made their move. As the backup team moved into position, Una could see the determination etched on their faces. They were going to make this work. The Hydroclops, sensing the new threat, whipped its tentacles wildly in their direction. Jake and Olympia dodged the attacks with practiced ease, their agility unmatched by any other team they had faced before. The backup team struck with precision, targeting the Hydroclops' weak points with a volley of well-placed shots. The beast howled in pain, its massive body shuddering under the onslaught. Oscar and Olive redoubled their efforts, firing laser blasts and tossing explosives at the monster. The Hydroclops, growing increasingly desperate, launched another powerful tentacle attack at the backup team. They barely managed to dodge out of the way, but it was clear that they were beginning to tire. The lava flow beneath them was reaching unbearable temperatures, and the air was growing thick with smoke. Una knew that they didn't have much time left. She signaled to the backup team, who nodded in understanding. Together, they launched a final, coordinated attack on the Hydroclops. The beast reeled under the onslaught, its massive body slumping to the ground with a thunderous roar. Chapter 2 As the dust settled, they all looked at each other in disbelief. They had done it. They had defeated the Hydroclops. The team exchanged high fives and fist bumps, their relief palpable. Even Orchid couldn't help but crack a smile. They had worked together seamlessly, each member bringing their unique skills to the table. It was a victory that would be remembered for years to come. As they walked away from the defeated Hydroclops, their footsteps echoing through the cavern, they knew that there would be many more challenges awaiting them in the future. But they also knew, without a doubt, that they could face them together. The lava flow continued to boil and churn beneath them, a reminder of the destructive power they had just contained. The chamber slowly began to cool, the air clearing as the smoke dissipated. The distant sound of sirens heralded the arrival of the backup team and rescue personnel. They would be needed to stabilize the area and make sure that the Hydroclops didn't cause any further damage. As they emerged from the chamber, blinking in the harsh light of the floodlights, they were greeted by a throng of reporters and cameramen. The heroes of the day, their faces grimy and bruised but lit up with pride. Agent Orchid gave a brief statement, praising the team's bravery and quick thinking. The world would now know of their incredible victory over the Hydroclops. Later, as they sat in the debriefing room, sipping coffee and nibbling on donuts, they couldn't help but feel a sense of accomplishment. Despite the exhaustion and adrenaline coursing through their veins, there was an undeniable sense of camaraderie among them. They had faced one of the most dangerous creatures in the world, and they had come out on top. As they replayed the events of the day in their minds, they knew that they would forever be bonded by this shared experience. And they couldn't wait for what the future would bring. Their exploits were quickly immortalized in newspapers and television screens around the globe. They became overnight celebrities, their faces plastered on magazine covers and billboards. Fans wrote letters and sent gifts, thanking them for their bravery and inspiring a new generation to pursue their dreams. Even though they had been recruited for this job, they knew that their actions had gone beyond the call of duty. They were more than just agents, they were heroes. Oscar and Olive, who had previously been rivals, now found themselves sitting side by side at public events, laughing and swapping stories about their time together. Jake and Olympia, who had once been reluctant partners, now had a newfound respect for each other. And Una and Orchid, the two veterans of the team, felt a sense of pride knowing that they had mentored such a talented group of individuals. As the months passed, they continued to tackle new missions, facing even greater challenges. But they always knew that their first victory against the Hydroclops would be the one that defined them. They had proven that, together, they could achieve anything. And as long as they had each other, there was no obstacle they couldn't overcome. Their fame grew, and with it came increased scrutiny from the public eye. Paparazzi followed their every move, trying to capture the perfect photo or juicy scoop. Fan clubs sprang up online, debating their favorite moments and speculating about their personal lives. 
but the team remained grounded, never losing sight of what truly mattered, their work and their connection to one another. During a particularly difficult mission, they found themselves facing a powerful sorceress who had been terrorizing a small village. The sorceress's spells were powerful and unpredictable, and the team knew that they would need to use every ounce of their combined skills to stand a chance against her. As they prepared for the final showdown, each member took a moment to reflect on the journey they had been through together. They had faced incredible odds and emerged stronger than ever before. They had become more than just a team, they were family. And it was that bond that would see them through this latest challenge. With renewed determination, they charged forward, attacking the sorceress on all fronts. The air filled with the clash of swords and the crackle of magic as they traded blows in a dizzying display of skill and teamwork. In the end, it was Una's quick thinking and Orchid's strategic planning that turned the tide of the battle. Working in tandem, they managed to land a decisive blow, sending the sorceress reeling and leaving her defenseless. It was then that Olive stepped forward, her sword glowing with a pure white light, and delivered the final strike. The sorceress crumpled to the ground, defeated. As the dust settled, the villagers, who had been watching from the sidelines, erupted into cheers. They threw flowers at the team's feet, tears of gratitude streaming down their faces. For them, the world had been saved once again. But for the team, it was just another day at the office. Another victory, another bond strengthened. They knew that there would be more challenges ahead, but they faced them together, united by their shared experiences and their unbreakable bond. Their fame only continued to grow, as they became known not only for their heroic deeds, but for their unwavering friendship and loyalty. They were more than just a team of agents, they were an inspiration to people all around the world. And as long as they had each other, there was no obstacle they couldn't overcome. Their fame grew, and with it came increased scrutiny from the public eye. Paparazzi followed their every move, trying to capture the perfect photo or juicy scoop. Fan clubs sprang up online, debating their favorite moments and speculating about their personal lives. But the team remained grounded, never losing sight of what truly mattered, their work and their connection to one another. During a particularly difficult mission, they found themselves facing a powerful sorceress who had been terrorizing a small village. The sorceress's spells were powerful and unpredictable, and the team knew that they would need to use every ounce of their combined skills to stand a chance against her. As they prepared for the final showdown, each member took a moment to reflect on the journey they had been through together. They had faced incredible odds and emerged stronger than ever before. They had become more than just a team, they were family. And it was that bond that would see them through this latest challenge. With renewed determination, they charged forward, attacking the sorceress on all fronts. The air filled with the clash of swords and the crackle of magic as they traded blows in a dizzying display of skill and teamwork. In the end, it was Una's quick thinking and Orchid's strategic planning that turned the tide of the battle. Working in tandem, they managed to land a decisive blow, sending the sorceress reeling and leaving her defenseless. It was then that Olive stepped forward, her sword glowing with a pure white light, and delivered the final strike. The sorceress crumpled to the ground, defeated. As the dust settled, the villagers, who had been watching from the sidelines, erupted into cheers. They threw flowers at the team's feet, tears of gratitude streaming down their faces. For them, the world had been saved once again. But for the team, it was just another day at the office. Another victory, another bond strengthened. They knew that there would be more challenges ahead, but they faced them together, united by their shared experiences and their unbreakable bond. Their fame only continued to grow, as they became known not only for their heroic deeds, but for their unwavering friendship and loyalty. They were more than just a team of agents, they were an inspiration to people all around the world. And as long as they had each other, there was no obstacle they couldn't overcome. During one particularly trying mission, they found themselves in the heart of a dense jungle, tracking down a notorious pirate who had been wreaking havoc on shipping lanes. The pirate, known as Captain Bloodthirsty, was infamous for his ruthlessness and cunning. The team knew that this mission would be their most difficult yet. As they trekked through the steamy jungle, they could feel the weight of their reputation pressing down on them. Every mistake would be magnified, every failure would be scrutinized. But they didn't let it phase them. They were a well-willed machine, 
each member knowing their role and playing it to perfection. Chapter 3 After days of searching, they finally came across Captain Bloodthirst's hidden lair. The pirate himself was lounging on a throne made of bones and gold, his eyes glinting with malice. The team sprang into action, each member attacking from a different angle, trying to catch the pirate off guard. It was during this intense battle that they discovered a flaw in Captain Bloodthirst's defenses, a hidden passage leading to a treasure room. Inside, they found a chest containing a map to a long-lost treasure. The map was ancient and worn, but they could make out the directions clearly. Excitement and anticipation coursed through their veins as they realized that they were about to embark on another adventure together. They defeated Captain Bloodthirsty and returned the stolen treasure to its rightful owners, earning themselves yet another place in history. But it was the discovery of the treasure map that truly changed their lives. For the next several years, they would embark on a series of adventures, following the map's clues and uncovering lost cities, buried treasures, and ancient secrets. Their bond grew stronger with each new discovery, each new challenge they faced together. And as they continued to explore the world, they began to realize that their true purpose went beyond simply being heroes. They were explorers, archaeologists, and adventurers. They were the ones who would uncover the mysteries of the world and share them with everyone. And they did it all together, side by side, as the unbreakable bond between them grew stronger with each passing day. They traveled to the lost city of El Dorado, where they solved the riddle of the golden statue and unearthed a long-lost civilization. They journeyed to the heart of Egypt, where they deciphered the hieroglyphs in King Tutankhamun's tomb and revealed the pharaoh's true identity. They even ventured into the depths of the ocean, exploring sunken ships and discovering the secrets of ancient seafaring civilizations. But it was during their time in the Far East that they faced their greatest challenge yet. A powerful sorcerer had awakened an ancient dragon, and the beast was wreaking havoc on entire villages. The team knew that they were the only ones who could stop it. After weeks of preparation, they steeled themselves for battle and set out to face the dragon. The fight was epic, a clash of elemental forces that threatened to tear the very sky apart. As the team battled the dragon, they were forced to use every ounce of their combined strength and cunning. Una's mastery of nature magic allowed her to control the wind and earth around them, shielding them from the dragon's fiery breath. Orchid's knowledge of ancient languages allowed her to decipher the runes carved into the dragon's scales, revealing its weak points. And it was Olive's quick thinking and unyielding courage that gave the team the edge they needed to defeat the beast. In the end, they emerged victorious, the world saved once again. But for them, it was just another day at the office. Another adventure completed, another memory made. As they walked away from the defeated dragon, they knew that there would be more challenges waiting for them around the corner. But they faced them together, side by side, their bond growing stronger with each new trial. Their fame continued to spread, and people from all corners of the world would come to them for help. Some sought treasure, others wisdom, and still others simply wanted to hear their stories and learn from their experiences. And so, the team continued their travels, using their unique skills and abilities to make the world a better place. They journeyed to the lost city of Atlantis, discovering the truth behind its legendary disappearance and uncovering the secrets of its advanced civilization. They explored the Amazon rainforest, encountering lost tribes and protecting the natural wonders of the world. They even traveled to the farthest reaches of space, battling aliens and unraveling the mysteries of the universe. But it was during their time in the African savannah that they faced their greatest test yet. A deadly virus was spreading rapidly among the animal populations, and if left unchecked, it would soon threaten the survival of the entire ecosystem. The team knew that they were the only ones who could stop it. They raced against time, tracking down the source of the outbreak and working tirelessly to find a cure. Their efforts were not without danger. They faced treacherous terrain, hostile animals, and even rival poachers who sought to claim their discoveries as their own. But through it all, their unbreakable bond held fast. They trusted each other implicitly, using their individual strengths to complement one another and overcome any obstacle that stood in their way. As the sun set on another day, they found themselves back at their camp, exhausted but triumphant. They looked around at the team they had become, Una, 
the wise and patient druid, Orchid, the cunning and resourceful rogue, Olive, the brave and steadfast fighter, and, of course, their faithful companion, Fidget, the ever-loyal familiar. They had faced danger and hardship together, and yet their bond only seemed to grow stronger with each passing adventure. They knew that there would be more challenges ahead, but for now, they allowed themselves a moment of respite. They sat around the crackling campfire, sharing stories and laughter, enjoying the simple pleasures of companionship. The scent of roasting marshmallows filled the air, and the sound of crickets chirping in the distance provided a soothing backdrop to their conversation. As they talked, they couldn't help but feel a sense of awe and gratitude for the life they had chosen. They had seen and experienced things that few people could ever dream of, and they had done it together. They had saved countless lives and protected the innocent from harm. They were, in every sense of the word, heroes. But despite their accomplishments, they were still just for ordinary girls with extraordinary abilities. They were bound by their shared history and their unbreakable bond, and they knew that they could face anything as long as they had each other. And so, as they sat around the campfire, they made a pact, no matter where their adventures took them, no matter what dangers they faced or what challenges they overcame, they would always have each other's backs. They would face the future together, as a team, as a family. And they knew that no matter what obstacles lay ahead, they would conquer them all. From that moment on, their legend only grew. They became known as the Four Sisters, a group of heroines who banded together against the forces of evil and used their unique gifts to make the world a better place. Their stories spread like wildfire, inspiring countless others to find their own paths to adventure and self-discovery. Una, the wise and patient druid, continued to study the ways of nature, seeking new spells and abilities to aid them in their travels. Orchid, the cunning and resourceful rogue, honed her skills as a thief and spy, always eager to uncover the secrets that lay hidden in the shadows. Olive, the brave and steadfast fighter, trained tirelessly, becoming an unstoppable force on the battlefield. And Fidget, the ever-loyal familiar, remained by their side, always ready to lend a paw or a wing when needed. They journeyed to the farthest reaches of the globe, exploring ancient ruins and lost cities, vanquishing evil wizards and powerful warlords. They fought side by side against armies of orcs and dragons, using their combined strength and cunning to emerge victorious time and time again. And through it all, their bond only grew stronger, unbreakable as the very mountains they climbed. As the years passed, their fame grew even further, and they became known not just as heroes, but as legends. They were the stuff of children's tales and campfire stories, their exploits sung by bards and recounted by storytellers across the world. But for Una, Orchid, Olive, and Fidget, their adventures were more than just stories. They were a way of life. A calling. A purpose. And as long as there was evil in the world, they knew that they would always have work to do. They journeyed to the heart of a great forest, where an ancient and malevolent tree spirit had taken root, corrupting the land for miles around. The creature was powerful and cunning, but the four sisters were undaunted. Una called upon the spirits of the forest to aid them, and the very earth seemed to rise up against the tree spirit, its roots entangling and crushing the monster beneath. Orchid, ever the cunning one, found a weakness in the creature's defenses and exploited it, while Olive charged headlong into battle, her sword singing through the air as she cleaved through the spirit's minions. And Fidget, ever loyal, remained by their side, lending his strength and courage to the fight. As the battle raged on, Una felt a surge of power within her, and she knew that the time had come to end the tree spirit once and for all. Summoning all of her strength, she unleashed a powerful spell, engulfing the creature in a blinding flash of light. When the dust settled, the tree spirit was gone, and the forest breathed a sigh of relief. The sisters had saved another day, and another group of innocents from suffering at the hands of evil. As they stood amidst the ruins of the corrupted forest, they knew that there would always be more challenges ahead. But they also knew that they would face them together, as they had faced all the others. For they were not just heroes, they were family. And as long as they had each other, they could conquer any obstacle, vanquish any foe, and restore peace and justice to the world. Chapter 4 The night sky began to fade to dawn, and Una, Orchid, Olive and Fidget gathered around a crackling campfire, warming their hands and recounting the battle they had just fought. 
they spoke of the tree spirit's cunning and power, of the courage they had found within themselves to stand against it, and of the strength they drew from their unbreakable bond. As they shared stories and laughter, they didn't notice the figure approaching their campfire. It was Jake, the head of their agency, who had been tracking their progress through the forest. He watched them with a mixture of pride and sadness, knowing that their days as active agents were numbered. They had grown too old, too experienced, to continue to be thrust into the heart of danger. But he also knew that their legacy would live on, in the countless lives they had saved and the countless hearts they had touched. Jake cleared his throat, and the four sisters looked up, surprised to see their superior standing there. You've done well, he said, his voice gruff with emotion. Very well. But it's time for you all to come home. You've earned your retirement. You've earned a life of peace and quiet. Orchid nodded, her green eyes sparkling with determination. We understand, Jake. We know that our time has come to pass the torch to the next generation. But know that we will always be with you, in spirit. And if the world should ever need us again, we will answer the call. Olive stood tall, her shoulders squared. We are grateful for the opportunities you've given us, and the trust you've placed in us. But we also know that it's time for us to move on and start a new chapter in our lives. Fidget, the oldest of the four, smiled sadly. It's been an honor serving under you, Jake. And it's been an even greater honor fighting beside these three. We faced countless battles together, and we've grown closer than most siblings. But we know that our time as active agents has come to an end. We'll take your words to heart and cherish the memories we've made. As the four of them stood there, basking in the glow of the campfire, they couldn't help but feel a sense of loss. They had been through so much together, experienced things that most people could only dream of. But they also felt a sense of excitement for the future. They knew that their lives would never be as adventurous or as dangerous as they once were, but they also knew that there were still many challenges and joys yet to be discovered. Their retirement home, a cozy cottage nestled in the foothills of the mountain range, beckoned to them. Orchid would tend to her herb garden, carefully cultivating potions and elixirs to soothe weary souls. Olive would teach the youngsters of the village the ways of stealth and agility, preparing them for the challenges that lay ahead. And Una would tend to the wounded animals that found their way to their doorstep, her gentle touch and healing powers a balm to their suffering. Fidget, however, found himself drawn to the old oak tree that towered over the cottage. It was the oldest and largest tree in the area, its gnarled branches reaching up towards the heavens. He would spend hours sitting at its base, listening to the wind rustle through its leaves and the birds singing their songs. Sometimes, he would close his eyes and let the sounds lull him into a peaceful sleep, dreaming of the battles they had fought and the friends they had made. One evening, as the sisters were preparing dinner and discussing their plans for the next day, Fidget heard a faint rustling in the leaves above him. He looked up, and there, perched on a branch of the old oak tree, was a small figure. As it hopped down onto the ground, the figure revealed itself to be a young girl, no more than eight or nine years old. Her clothes were tattered and dirty, and her eyes held a haunted look. Fidget immediately sensed that the girl had been through much suffering. Without hesitation, he knelt down in front of her, offering her a friendly smile. Hello, he said softly. My name is Fidget. What's your name, dear? The girl didn't respond at first, but after a moment, she whispered, My name is Lark. Orchid and Olive, who had been in the midst of preparing dinner, paused and glanced over at the pair. They exchanged knowing looks, realizing that this was no ordinary encounter. Olive set down the knife she was using and walked over to join them. Lark, she said gently, are you lost, dear? Lark shook her head, her eyes filled with fear. No. I mean, not anymore. I was running from them, but I don't want to run anymore. Her voice broke, and she began to sob uncontrollably. Olive knelt down beside her, taking her hands in hers. It's okay, Lark, she said soothingly. You're safe here. Fidget looked at his sisters, wondering what he should do. He knew that they would want to help Lark, but he also knew that they were unprepared for the task that lay before them. He took a deep breath and made a decision. Lark, he said, would you like to stay with us for a while? 
we can help you find a safe place to live, and make sure those who have been hurting you can't find you again. Lark sniffled and wiped her nose on her sleeve. She looked up at Fidget, her eyes filled with hope. Really? she asked. You'd help me? Fidget nodded, his heart filled with compassion. Of course we would, Lark. You're one of us now. With that, the four of them wrapped their arms around the young girl, giving her the comfort and protection she had been longing for. As they sat there, under the watchful eye of the old oak tree, they knew that their lives were about to change once again. They had faced countless battles and adversities together, and now they would face this new challenge together as well. The sisters looked at each other, a silent understanding passing between them. They had been through so much, and they had seen the worst of humanity, but they still believed in the goodness of people. They believed that they could make a difference in Lark's life, and in the lives of others like her. A few minutes later, Oscar came back, his fur matted and his tail drooping. The wound on his side was still healing, but he had managed to survive. The sisters exchanged worried glances as they saw their loyal companion return, bearing the scars of battle. They knew that he must have faced great danger in the outside world. As they approached him, Fidget spoke softly, Oscar, my friend, what happened? Who did this to you? The old dog looked up at them with sad eyes, his expression filled with pain and determination. He struggled to stand on three legs, but managed to limp over to them. It's not important, Fidget, he said, his voice weak. What matters is that I have to warn you. The danger is closer than you think. The sisters exchanged confused looks. They knew that Oscar would not make such a statement lightly. What do you mean, Oscar? Orchid asked, her voice trembling. What danger? But before Oscar could answer, a shrill howl pierced the air, echoing through the forest. It was a sound they had not heard in many years, a sound that sent shivers down their spines. As if in response, the branches of the old oak tree above them began to rustle, and a dark figure emerged from the shadows. It was a wolf, larger than any they had ever seen before, its eyes burning with a malevolent fire. Its jaws were open in a savage snarl, revealing rows of sharp, white teeth. The sisters exchanged alarmed glances. They knew that this was no ordinary wolf, but rather a powerful sorcerer who had taken the form of an animal to infiltrate their camp. The wolf advanced on them, its movements fluid and deadly. Fidget stepped forward, drawing his sword with a shaking hand. Stand aside, sisters, he said. I will face this beast alone. Una and Olive exchanged worried glances, but did not protest. They knew that Fidget was the strongest of them all, and perhaps he had a plan. As the wolf and Fidget circled each other, the other sisters watched from the sidelines, their hearts racing in their chests. Orchid began to silently pray, while Lark clutched tightly to her sisters, terrified by the sight before her. The oak tree seemed to sway in time with the battle, as if it were alive and taking part in the struggle. The wolf lunged at Fidget, but the young man was quick to dodge. He parried the beast's next attack with his sword, managing to scratch its side. The wolf snarled in pain and rage, its eyes burning with fury. It charged again, this time faster than Fidget had anticipated. The sword flew from his hand, clattering to the ground. The wolf was upon him in an instant, its claws raking across his chest, drawing blood. Fidget cried out in pain, struggling to defend himself. Una felt a surge of panic rise within her. She knew that she had to help her brother, but she was afraid. She glanced at Lark, who was trembling with fear, and then at Oscar, who lay wounded at their feet. Suddenly, an idea came to her. She reached down and picked up a small, smooth stone from the ground. Without hesitation, she threw it at the wolf with all her might. The stone hit the wolf square in the eye, momentarily stunning it. As it recovered, Orchid rushed forward, her hands glowing with a soft, golden light. She placed them on the wound on Oscar's side, and the blood began to slow, eventually stopping. Meanwhile, Fidget seized the opportunity and rolled out of the way. He scrambled to retrieve his sword, only to find that it was lodged deep in the ground. The wolf turned its attention back to him, growling menacingly. Fidget looked around frantically, searching for anything he could use as a weapon. His eyes fell on Lark, 
who was clutching a small stick. Without hesitating, he shouted at her, Use your power, sister. Help me defeat this beast. Chapter 5 Lark's heart raced, but she steeled herself and closed her eyes. She could feel the power within her, coursing through her veins. As the wolf lunged at Fidget once more, Lark thrust her tiny stick into the ground, and a towering tree sprouted from it, its branches reaching for the sky. The wolf, caught off guard, collided with the tree and was trapped within its tangled roots. It struggled frantically, but it was no match for the might of the living tree. As the battle ended, the sisters and Fidget knelt beside Oscar, who lay on the ground, his eyes closed. His breath came in ragged gasps, and blood still seeped from his wounds. Orchid continued to pour her healing energy into him, hoping that it would be enough. Oscar, she whispered, what is it that you must warn us about? Why does this danger linger closer than we think? The old dog opened his eyes, his expression weary but determined. I cannot say more, he gasped. But I sense it in the air, a darkness that threatens us all. You must be prepared, my friends. You must be ready to face whatever comes your way. His voice trailed off, and his eyes closed once more. Fidget looked at his sisters, his expression grave. We must find out what Oscar meant, he said. And we must do it quickly. We cannot ignore this threat any longer. The sisters nodded in agreement, their hearts heavy with worry. As they prepared to journey on, they knew that they would never forget the lessons they had learned in this forest, nor the sacrifices that had been made to protect them. The days that followed were filled with a sense of foreboding. The sisters continued to train with Fidget, honing their skills and strengthening their bond. They spoke of their encounter with the wolf and the old dog, hoping that someone in their village might know something of the danger that loomed. But no one seemed to have any answers. When the beast was fought dead by Fidget, Lark and his sisters all went home to get a good night rest. Oscar was very overwhelmed and tired. Everyone thought it was a very busy day. Jake was very tired, so he suggested he should go to bed. He hugged Una, Olympia, Orchid and Olive goodnight and then he drifted off to sleep. The village people were very grateful for their efforts in protecting them and they decided to throw a big feast in their honor. The sisters and Fidget were invited to sit at the head of the table and were given the best food and drink. As they ate, they couldn't help but feel a sense of foreboding in the air. They exchanged glances, wondering if the danger that Oscar had warned them about was already upon them. Throughout the feast, the sisters and Fidget kept an eye out for anyone who might know something about the threat that lurked closer than they thought. They spoke to elders and wise women, but none of them had any answers. As the evening wore on, they decided that they would have to continue their search elsewhere. They knew that they could not rest until they had uncovered the truth. During the night, Jake and the agents had been dreaming about the time they fought with Hydroclops, and they knew that old creature would be yet again a fearsome creature by the time it may rise from the dead in another hundred years. The End